Hi, Dr. Steve here. Today I want to show you how quickly you can complete a math section of the SAT if you know how to answer questions efficiently. In a moment, you will see me complete Section 3 of Test 1 from the College Board's Official SAT Study Guide, or the Blue Book, as many of you call it. If you will be taking the SAT, then I'm sure you have a copy of this book. If you do not have a copy, then I would seriously urge you to get one as soon as possible. This is the only book that contains actual SATs. In this video, I will be writing on plain white paper and using my TI-84 calculator when appropriate to get answers. I will be vocalizing my thought process as much as possible. Those of you that are familiar with my materials will recognize many of the strategies that I will be using. Note that this process of verbalizing my thoughts will actually slow me down a bit, but if you watch carefully, you will get to see some of the unique ways I solve problems. Some that will save a huge amount of time, and some that will ensure that I do not make careless mistakes. Have your copy of the Blue Book open in front of you so you can follow along as I solve each problem. Unfortunately, due to copyright laws, I cannot display the questions themselves. The most important thing to notice is that I complete each question fairly quickly by using an effective technique, not by rushing. Also note that I did not review these questions prior to filming this video, so the methods I am using to solve these problems are being chosen as I am reading the questions. You will observe that I completed this 25 minute section in under 9 minutes. There's a timer to show how much time I am taking. So I would have plenty of time to go back and solve each question one or two more times, ideally using a different method from the first time. I'm not going to check my answers in this video, as I already know that the answers I have provided are correct, but please check them and see for yourself. This video is only for Section 3 of Test 1. There are three math sections in the test, so please watch my other videos to see me complete the other two sections. Okay, number one. If x equals 4, which of the following is greatest in value? Okay, let's try a. That would be 5 times 6, which is 30. And let's try e which is zero. All right, so it looks like the answer is A, but let's try the others as well. B is five times three, which is 15. C is two times six, which is 12. And D is uh, two times um, five, which is 10. Okay, so the answer is A. Number two, trains A, B, and C pass through a station at different speeds. Train A speed was three times B's and C's twice A's. Uh, what was train C speed in miles per hour if train B's was seven miles per hour? So seven, so that's 21 for A, and two times 21 is 42 for C. That's choice E. Okay. Number three, if the average of x, 5x, and 6x, that's 7, 12x, is 8, so the sum is 8, 16, 24, divide by 12, and x is 2, choice B. Okay, number four, which of the following graphs has the property stated above? No two points on the graph have the same x-coordinate, so that would be choice D. Okay, number five. The Venn diagram above shows the distribution of 30 science students who studied butterflies, grasshoppers, both or neither. What percent of the students studied butterflies only? So we want to know 9 out of 30 uh, times 100. That's 30, which is choice C. Okay, number 6. In the figure above AB equals CD, what is the value of T? Uh, let's see, CD has length 10, so AB has length 10, 3 up, 7 down, so it will be negative 7, choice C. Okay, number 7. If 3x squared equals 4y equals 12, so y is 3, x squared is 4, what is the value of x squared y? So we don't have to find x, it's just 4 times 3 is 12, which is choice D. Number 8. Uh, in the figure above, the circles are tangent as shown, and the center circle A is also the center of the largest circle. The radius of circle A is 2, so that's 2. The radius of circle B is 4, so let's see, that's 4 and that's 4. And the radius of circle C is 4, that's 4 and that's 4. What is the radius of the largest circle? So that would be 4 and 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10, that's choice D. Okay. 
number nine. Figure above tick marks are equally spaced on the number line. What is the value of x? So 42 minus 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 40 over 5 is 8. So we have to add 8 to 2 twice. That's uh, 2 plus 8 is 10 plus another 8 is 18. That's choice D. Number 10. In the figure above, what is the value of x? So let's see, we have 110 and 30 is 140. We have that 140 plus x is 270. So 270 minus 140 is 130. And that would be choice C. Okay, number 11. When the positive integer k is divided by 7, the remainder is 6. So I'll let k be 6. What is the remainder when k plus 2, that's 8, is divided by 7? The remainder is 1. That's choice B. Number 12. The chart above shows the pressure as a function of the depth for every 15 feet of descent into the ocean. I see the choices have pressure and depth. Um, when depth is zero, pressure is 14.7. It's about there. When depth is 15, the pressure goes up. So it's going to go like this. Uh, if the pressure increases at a constant rate for every foot of descent, which of the following graphs describes the given data? Um, okay, mine looks like choice D. All right, number 13. 13, okay. The first term of a sequence of numbers is one. If each term after the first is the product of negative two and the preceding term, just keep multiplying by negative two, negative two, etc. Okay, uh, what is the sixth term of the sequence? One, two, three, four, five, six, negative 32, that's choice E. Okay, number 14. 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5 is five. What is 4x squared? Okay, we're multiplying two conjugates, so we just have to do the first and the last. Uh, that's 4x squared minus 25 is 5. So 4x squared is 30. That's what they're asking for. That's choice E. Okay, number 15. The coordinates of point A and the figure above are PR, where absolute P greater than absolute R, which the fine could be the slope of AB. All right, it looks like that. So it's going over more than it's going down. It's going down, so it's negative. So we're looking for a negative. Um, and it's got to be negative one-half. Okay, that's choice B. Number 16, if 3a plus 4b is b, so 3a plus 3b is 0, what is 6a plus 6b? That's 0 as well, choice A. Number 17, in right triangle ABC above, EF is parallel to AC and F is the midpoint of BC. What is the area of the shaded rectangular region? Okay, so I see this triangle here. That's going to be 5 root 2. So that makes this a 5 and a 5, assuming this is a 45, 45 degree triangle. Doesn't say not drawn to scale, so I'll assume it is. That's 5, that's 5. So we have 10 by 5 is 50 for the shaded region, choice C. Number 18. Table above shows some values for the function f. If f of x is k a to the x, for some constants k and a, what is the value of a? Right, so I'm going to plug in a 0 for x and I get out a half for f of x. a to the 0 is 1, so k is a half. So we have that f of x is 1 half a to the x. And now I'm going to plug in a 1 for x and get out a 2. So 2 is 1 half a to the 1. So a is 4, and that's choice D. Okay, number 19. The pyramid shown above has altitude H and a square base of side M. The four edges that meet at V, the vertex of the pyramid, each have length E. If E equals M, what is the value of H in terms of M? Okay, I'm going to draw this triangle here. That's a right triangle in three dimensions. Um, H is equal to M. I see M's in the answer choices, so I'm going to make that M. Um, now this one, this is half the diagonal of the square. Uh, so we have M, M, uh, M, M. So this is M root 2. Um, and that's half that. So this is M root 2 over 2. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. H squared plus M root 2 over 2 squared is M squared. Uh, this piece here is M squared times 2 over 4 or 1 half m squared equals m squared h squared plus. Uh, bring that over, we have h squared equals 1 half m squared. So h is m over root 2, uh, which is choice A. Okay. Number 20. A salesperson's commission is k percent, percent, I'm going to make k equal 100 right away, k percent of the selling price of a car. Which of the following represents the commission in dollars on two cars that sold for 14,000 each? 
So that's 28,000 total. It's 100%, so the answer should be 28,000. So let me go through the answer choices now. Um, 280 times 100, that is 28,000. That works, but we gotta eliminate the rest. B and C are clearly too big. Uh, D, let me do that. 14,000 divided by 100 plus 200, so it's divided by 300, so it's 14, thousand divided by 300 that's about 46 and change cross that out and 28,000 plus a hundred enter over a hundred uh, that's 281 too small the answer is a and we are done